Erin Kowalski is here with me now, the Chief Mission Officer for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Thank you for talking with oh, us. It's great to be here. Thanks. A lot of new options, and that has to feel good for pediatric patients and their parents. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing how technology is revolutionizing diabetes right now. Of course, JDRF, we want a cure, but until there's a cure, helping people live healthy, easier lives uh, is coming through technology right now and new drugs. But for kids and for parents, managing diabetes is hard, and this gives them more options. So when you think about the insulin pumps now and the glucose monitors, how is that making life easier, but perhaps adding some complications as well? Yeah, it's amazing. I uh, have lived with diabetes for 34 years. I have a brother, 41 years, and I'll have families say, I can't believe you lived without CGM. And continuous glucose monitors have transformed our lives. I mean, fantastic advances. Parents can now see their children's uh, data when they're on a sleepover. Uh, when they're at school, you can protect from highs and lows. So absolutely no doubt they're uh, hugely helpful. Now on the counter side at this meeting, we're hearing a lot about the psychosocial burden of diabetes and the day in and day out nature and putting on devices is something that people without diabetes don't do. So you're adding something to your life that often in childhood, uh, there's this balance. And I think the device is one of the things we're trying to learn is how do we reduce the burden on uh, kids so it's uh, not so obtrusive uh, and they can get the full benefit. Right, because kids can be tough and there's social media and bullying and all of this stuff that happens and you already feel different. How does that impact them being compliant with what they need to do and, and perhaps getting more depressed about their disease? Uh, well, we know the data is that kids and especially young adults don't achieve good glucose levels in the United States. The average A1C for a 17-year-old is 9.3%, uh, according to the T1D uh, exchange data, which is way too high. And what we are trying to do is really incorporate and make sure that people understand that diabetes is more than just an A1C. It's going to school. It's having a sleepover. It's uh, playing sports and being active. And you'll have a lot of families where they want their kids to be active and play sports, but there are the challenges of hypoglycemia and glucose levels. So it really, what we're trying to, to, to do better is really understand those uh, pushes and pulls in somebody's life with diabetes and making sure that you can help them achieve the best glucose levels. I always distill it down to a balance. You have the glucose on one side and you have kind of life on the other. And sometimes if you push too hard on one or the other, you get out of balance. And finding that right balance is something that JDRF and I know this uh, research community is really looking for. But it's so critical when you think of the comorbidities and the impact on someone who's had diabetes from childhood. Yeah, I mean, of course, A1C is a measurement of risk for long-term complications. So we don't want high A1Cs. We want to do the best we can there. But depression, anxiety, and these kind of patient-reported outcomes are, are very much higher in people with diabetes, type 1 and type 2. So we want to reduce the risk of having blindness and kidney disease and these terrible uh, micro and macrovascular complications. But people need to be happy. You know, I use a closed loop artificial pancreas system. It's been transformative. And one of the beauties of this system is it's, it's helping me on my glucose levels, but it's also taking some of the decisions out of my mind. So that's a big benefit. I think about diabetes less. Sleeping better. So that's not an A1C outcome, but if you talk to parents or kids with type one diabetes, sleep is a big issue. So, you know, this is, a, a, again, a common theme that we're talking about at this meeting is the A1C is an important measure, but these other parts of diabetes life are hugely important as well. But there have been so many advancements, I think, that there appears to be a better option yes. for patients, but also hope for the future. The ultimate metric for JDRF success is people doing better and ultimately a cure. So in the near term, we're very focused on options. You're seeing options on pumps, you're seeing options on sensors, you're seeing options on new drugs for, for people with diabetes. But we also are now seeing things that are, uh, will be spoken about at this meeting, cell therapies, glucose responsive insulins, vaccines to prevent type one in the next generation. I mean, the advances uh, in science right now are amazing. The ADA scientific sessions is uh, just an incredible time to share what's going on here. And I'm, I'm super optimistic.
Well, with your personal and professional passion for this, yeah, I'm sure exactly. things will be great. Thank you so much, Aaron Thanks for Kowalski. having me. It's great.